Welcome back to this uh, video series about probability. In, in this video, I'm going to uh, introduce uh, the idea of probability distributions, and furthermore, uh, the important idea of using probability distributions to represent uncertainty. Uh, I would say this is an important and, and actually deeply philosophical point because it says that it doesn't matter uh, whether we are fatalists who believe the world is truly de deterministic or if we believe there really is such thing as chance, you know, that if you flip a coin, you know, it, it really could come up one way or the other uh, by chance. In either case, whether the world is determined or, or undetermined, you know, with free will and all that, uh, regardless of that worldview, we can, uh, our, our knowledge about this world, whether it's perfect or, uh, whether the world is perfect or not, is imperfect. So we fundamentally have imperfect knowledge about the world around us. Um, and when we, because we have imperfect knowledge of the world around us, we can use probability as a way of representing and quantifying that imperfect knowledge. So I actually purposely think that that's kind of pretty profound, the idea that we can use probability theory uh, to, as a way of kind of quantifying our imperfect knowledge of the world. And so this kind of says that you know you know probability distributions aren't about you know flipping coins they're about you know quantifying our, our imperfect knowledge so if a random variable was a variable that can take on more than one value with those values determined by probabilities uh, then a probability distribution is a function that we use to assign those probabilities to random variables so if we think about a simple case of uh, uh, rolling a dice, that dice has uh, six possible outcomes, and we might represent the probability of outcome big X, you know, our random variable big X being equal to three is a one in six chance because there's equal probability of those six outcomes. So big X is a random variable. The probability that random variable takes on a specific value three is assigned some specific probability. More generally, we can write the probability that a random x value, big X, takes on a specific value, little x, k, is assigned with probability p, k, uh, with some important constraints. Uh, the, those individual probabilities, all k of them, uh, have to be between 0 and 1. You can't have negative probabilities. You can't have probabilities bigger than uh, 100%. And furthermore, that those probabilities have to sum up to one. So, you know, if I have a six sided dice and they each had, you know, a 10% chance of happening, then there's 40% missing. You know, that you can't, that doesn't make sense because there can't be a 40% chance of it not coming up any of these six options. Like it's going to come up one of these. And beyond this idea of, of kind of defining the idea of a probability distribution, there's two major classes of, of probability distributions that are important to know about. Uh, first is the idea of discrete distributions, and this assigns uh, probabilities to things that have you know, discrete outcomes, such as uh, integer outcomes, um, rather than continuous variables. So a very common example of a discrete distribution is Poisson, uh, which is used to represent the probability of a given number of events occurring given some underlying rate parameter. And we use the probability distribution a lot in the environmental sciences because if we have some, uh, some event that's supposed to occur with some probability over time, it will occur, you know, with the Poisson distribution might describe how many times it actually occurred because it can only occur an integer number of times. It can't occur a half of a time. Or if we're sampling over some space, we might with some, you know, density, Lambda, the, we're actually going to count uh, a, a discrete number of things in that space uh, you know, with some distribution. So, if we, you know, a lot of count data out there, we're counting individuals, we're counting species, we're counting uh, you know, events that occur in space. Those are uh, very often described by uh, Poisson distributions. But the other really common discrete distribution, which we already saw, in the earlier video was uh, the binomial, which kind of you know, describes uh, 
the number of events out of a subset of trials. So there's an upper and lower bound on the Poisson, uh, on the binomial. The Poisson, on the other hand, doesn't have a strict upper bound. It has a strict lower bound. You can't have negative events occur. But you know, there is not a the theoretical upper bound on the number of events. So you know, if, if something's likely to happen, you know, uh, you know, five times in the next decade, it could occur, you know, thousands and thousands of times, but with very, very low probability if the expected number is five. But it's not impossible. Uh, in contrast to discrete distributions, the other type are continuous distributions that describe uh, the case when our random variable x is a, a continuous uh, number, a real number, instead of an integer. Um, and so in the case of a continuous distribution, we have a few slightly different constraints. Uh, so the, the, uh, our random variable x is assigned um, a probability density rather than a, a specific individual probability because since there's an infinite, so if you think about the case, say, one of our simplest cases of a uniform distribution. So let's say we're talking about all numbers uh, between 0 and 1 are equally likely. That might be a uniform distribution between 0 and 1. Well, you can't talk about what's the probability of uh, you know, something occurring at you know, a 0.5, because there's actually truly uh, an infinite number of fine subdivisions between 0 and 1. So in, any individual number has infinitesimally small probability, but we, instead we can talk about the probability over some range. So we can still say the probability of occurring you know, between uh, 0.45 and 0.55 uh, occurs with a 10% chance, if, um, even though the probability of being at 0.5 exactly is, is uh, not defined. So we can think, talk about the integral over this distribution integrating to one because that probability still has to sum up, or in this case, integrate up to one. But individual values from the probability distribution, uh, they have to be positive, but they don't strictly have to be less than one now. Because you know, if I, if I you know, for example, if I said the uniform distribution between zero and 0.1, you know, for this to integrate to one, its height would have to be at 10. But it doesn't mean there's a probability, anything has a probability of 10 of occurring. <clears throat> um, so this is just kind of, again, reiterating that we don't talk about the probability of individual events. We talk about the probability of being uh, over some bounded region, some lower and upper bound, uh, being the integral of that probability density. Fair point, I'll say. In practice, you never have to do, you, you almost never have to do these integrals. That's, you know, R, R will do them for us. So yeah, showing again, if we're t we can talk about the probability as a kind of the area uh, within that uh, that interval. The uh, the other distribution we see a lot of uh, for continuous variables, probably the most common continuous distribution, is the normal distribution, which you, I'm sure we've all seen before. Talking about you know, this idea of a, a bell curve, where again we uh, assume, uh, say that there's a normal density for the random variable x described by uh, two parameters, a mean and a variance, or a mean and a standard deviation. And there are, there are literally you know, scores and scores of different probability distributions out there that each make slightly different assumptions, uh, and both discrete and continuous, that are used for different purposes. Uh, but the, these ones that we've covered so far, like binomial, normal, Poisson, uniform, are, are probably some of the most common ones you're likely to encounter. <clears throat> 